Hello everyone, my name is Edward Daniel and welcome to Effie Vegan. Today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Raw Chef Yin. Hello, how are Hi, you? Hi, I'm great. Now, we're here in the Bali Vegan Festival in Ubud, Bali, having an amazing time, aren't we? Yes, and you've definitely. just done, you've just made some mooncake. And you've, right. I think you've got some mooncake over there, haven't you? I think it's hiding in that little <laughs> tub. <laughs> We do now, have it, yes. Oh, tell me how this is made. What is it made from? Okay, so um, the mooncake has three elements to it. It has the crust, uh, and it has a filling, and then it has a yolk, a vegan yolk. So the, the crust is actually made from coconut flour, and then the filling I've done... You could do all sorts of things, but what I've done is I've used um, dates and cacao powder, and a bit of cacao nibs as well, so for all the chocolate fans, you can have this. And then the yolk, um, I've tried to get it as close as possible to kind of an egg yolk taste. So it's got apricots, it's got black salt, the kala namak that gives it that yolky eggy taste. There's also some nutritional yeast and a bit of turmeric powder. So wow. it's basically a lot of blending, processing, and then you put it into the mooncake mold and mold it and it comes out really beautiful. Well, because I've had a taste of that and it was honestly, it was mind-boggling how amazing it really was. It was just Awesome, so uh, thank, you, so thank you for sharing your food with us. It was like, wow. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's really good. Now, how long have you been going then, um, Yin? So I've been doing this um, since 2016. So it's been over two and a half years of being a raw vegan chef and educator. Uh, it's been really interesting, very exciting. Um, yeah, I've had like the most amazing experiences working with different raw food chefs, um, traveling all over Asia, helping people to make beautiful raw vegan food and have food that is energizing and nourishing. Do you think the way the consciousness is evolving is having a, ma a massive dramatic effect all over Asia? I think so. I mean, it's... Or was it already there? You know what, I think Asians have always been very conscious of our food. It's just that, I mean, in Malaysia, we're so, we're so influenced by the Western side as well. But I think now we're coming back to our roots. I mean, I'm using, I'm trying to use a lot of um, Malaysian herbs and a lot of um, Malaysian edible leaves in my recipes so that we, instead of looking towards imported food and all that. And I, I mean, people talk about things like um, farm to table, but I think during my grandparents' days and my great-grandparents' days, that was always what we were doing, you know, and always having fresh food. Um, yeah, you go to the markets, you get it straight away. Or you, a lot of us used to plant uh, like our herbs in our backyard. So things like lemongrass, things like kaffir lime leaves, um, even mint and all that. I remember in my home, we planted tomatoes and we had, um, we had four angled beans and all that. So we would just go to the garden, pick it up, cut it up. But I suppose, in a way, that's, that that brings fusion into life because obviously, if you if you start from one journey where it's localized, mm -hmm. and then it becomes much more uh, internationalized, and then you go back to something that's more localized. Obviously, there's a there's a that you have that knowledge that comes in, and you're able to bring all true. that into into the stuff that you do. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because the techniques that I learned. Um, on how to make raw food is um, pretty much Western techniques, but what I'm doing is applying it to more Asian and local food instead. So, yeah, taking that and bringing it here. Wow, that sounds amazing. Now, you started your journey, you've actually got your own YouTube channel, haven't you? Yes, and that's right. Do you want to tell us about that? And and obviously, you're, you're always on Instagram, I can see. <laughs> I've only just started following you, but you just seem to be all over the place. What, what's going on there? Okay. So my YouTube channel, Raw Chef Yin, um, I, I have a YouTube show called Delicious with Raw Chef Yin. Um, our director thought it would be really cool to, to call it Delicious because it's vegan and delicious. It was his idea. Right, okay. And the focus is a, a lot on um, easy to make Asian recipes. Yeah, so there's like pineapple thai, uh, thai pineapple fried rice. Because I travelled a lot in my corporate days, I travelled a lot across Asia, um, ASEAN because that was my market that I covered. And, um, ASEAN I is A-S-E-A-N, isn't it? Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. so I covered... Um, um, 
I love the food from Thailand. I love the food from Indonesia. Um, yeah, and I have some um, also like Korean recipes as well. Yeah, so I've been doing all that. And, and you've actually got your own book. I do, oh, I you do. do with twenty one <laughs> recipes. These are twenty one raw nutritious recipes in your book yes yeah wow isn't that amazing yeah I, I'm actually really excited about it because it's the very first raw vegan cookbook in Malaysia and there are some recipes I, I swear which have never ever been published before anywhere else if you're from Malaysia if you're from KL you would have heard of um, this thing called chili pani um, it's a noodle dish and I've never seen any of this printed in uh, in made in a raw vegan manner. And this is the most complex recipe in the book. Yeah. So wow. you must be really excited and really happy that you've been able to produce something because I know for me when I when I did my book, it takes a lot of thought, a lot of process and a lot of trial and error to produce something. So how do yeah. you feel? You you know what? It's quite funny. I, I seem to be the reluctant person so I, I never actually wanted to become like a, a cooking instructor, a vegan educator. I, I just wanted to make food, right, for myself. And people kept asking and asking and after a few months I said, okay, I, I'll start doing classes. And then even this book, I think for two years people have been asking me to like, write a book, write a book. And I, I didn't want to do it because I was just, like you say, you know, I thought it was just something too stressful and too much work. And then um, I got accepted into the MIT Beyond Food Bootcamp and the tuition fee was 6000 US dollars. So I needed to raise funds, hence the book. It's a right, fundraising okay. effort as well. So this helped me take that um, MIT course. Brilliant, yeah. so, wow. So yes, I'm part of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology alumni as well. So what are you hoping to do next? What's, what's happening next for Raw Chef Year? <laughs> Alright, so um, in November, there's going to be, uh, I've been invited to present at a TEDx talk, so I'm going to be a presenter. I am speaking on raw veganism and uh, I'm still figuring out what I want to do. No, I mean, I've drafted it out and I'm testing out the speech. Um, yeah, so that's one of the big things. Um, I've also been invited to collab collaborate with uh, raw vegan French chef Tina. Um, in um, sometime next year as well, so I, I did one collaboration with her on a pop-up dining experience and we're doing another one coming this year. Um, what else? Uh, maybe I'll write another book. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> but, sure. But I think, I think life, the, the, the amazing thing about life is it takes us on journeys and I know for me, certainly coming here at the Bali Vegan Festival, that it's going to have a dramatic impact on me on a subconscious level, even on a conscious level. I mean, do you feel that? It does, it does, yeah. I mean, the energy, the you vibration. Feel... I mean, certainly, I know it's so dramatic when we went and met yesterday oh, in the speech yeah. sp speaker know, section, right? and it was so nice to be able to, to meet all the different speakers and interact. How did yeah. you feel about that? I thought it was, like, really inspiring, and it was just really interesting to see how people are coming um, to veganism from very, very different angles and very different personal experiences. Yeah, so I really, really enjoyed it. And yeah, it's just like so many new ideas coming together and I'm sure there'll be collaborations coming up as well. Of course, it was going to be an amazing time, so that is great. Now, three tips about starting as a raw chef. Mm. What, what would be your three tips? Raw chef, okay. Um, number one, I think um, learn as much as you can. I think learning is actually lifelong, so at the Bali Vegan Festival, I'm going to take every single cooking class I can. You know, um, ex uh, number two, experiment. I think you shouldn't be afraid. I think I, I realized something. I recently did a pop up dinner and I made a mango tatar. So it was made in mango with um, avocado. Uh, and also there were herbs, and I used Malaysian herbs. So I used like the daun pergaga, I used selom, I used ulam raja. And there was this lady, she told me, she said, Oh, I would have never thought of putting all these ingredients together, but she said that it, it really went very well. Wow. And because I don't come from like a traditional culinary education, I come from like raw vegan culinary education, where, you know, you're just totally different from what everybody does anyway. So I, it, didn't, it didn't even occur to me that it was strange. To me, it was just like, yeah, this, I'm pretty sure this will go well together and everybody loves it. So, so don't be afraid to experiment. 
And I guess the third thing is, um, don't, don't be afraid of what people will say about you. I think initially I used to be really afraid of posting my ugly photos online, but now I just put it up and I realize like people see my mooncake pictures from two years ago which I think is really ugly but they really like it and they're like oh I'm, I came for your mooncake class because I saw your those pictures that you took you know the ones that um, I think I was I was coming up with a, a mooncake recipe for Malaysia day and I was using the colors of the Malaysian flag and now I look back and I think it's really ugly oh. but there were a few people who came out and say like whoa I like that I really like that one so I realized that um, yeah don't be, yeah, don't be scared, just put it out there. And keep growing and keep learning. Wow, wow. You have actually really inspired me, uh, Yin. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to think about new ways of, of cooking and being. And, <laughs> and it's just excitable. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just amazed that there's so many wonderful speakers here, aren't there? Just a lovely yeah. place to be. Yeah, so, uh, and the energy and the vibration here is just amazing, isn't it? It it's is. off the world, yeah. off world. So uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that's all from me, and that's all from Raw Chef Yin. Bye bye. bye.